Hello and welcome back. Now that we are working with Spark, today we will look into one of the most important topic, which are distributed shared variables. Spark has two type of variables that it has to offer in distributed manner. The first one is broadcast variable and the second one are accumulators. Now, both have a great deal of significance if you understand them very perfectly. You can tune some of your jobs using these variables. Before we can begin, if you have not watched our previous video, I would recommend you to go back and watch our playlist. You can click the I button at the top. So, without any delay, let's begin. Now, before we can understand what are the different type of distributed shared variables we are going to look, we are going to use the employed records.csp as a data set today. It has many columns like first name, last name, job title, and in the end, we have salary and department ID. This will be the data set that we will use today for our demonstration. Now, for today's session, I'm going to configure my cluster setting as Spark Core Max as 16 and the core executor as 4. This will enable to spin up a cluster with four executors and four core each. The memory setting is closed at 512 MB. Let me generate the Spark session object first. Our Spark session object is generated. Let me go ahead and refresh our Spark UI. Okay, our Spark UI is up and running. Now, before we understand the broadcast variable, let's understand the problem statement that we are going to use. Since we know we have an employee record set where we have ID as a column, consider a case we want to populate department name according to the department ID. What are the options that we have? First option, we create a department data frame and we join it with the employee data frame and populate the department names. Now, the problem with this is this will involve suffering. Then what can be the second approach? The second approach is we, we can create a lookup variable like this and we can send it with an UDF or a map operation. But the problem here is if we create a variable variable will be serialized along with the task. So every time when this task would be deserialized, this variable would be deserialized and this deserialization and serialization will happen row by row. So what is the problem here? The problem is since this looks like a small variable, this is easy. Consider a case where you have a lookup table or a machine learning model that you need to use. In that case, it will create a bottleneck, right? So for this comes in rescue is broadcast variable. Benefit of broadcast variable is it is sent over and cached in each of the executor. So whenever we create a broadcast variable, it is sent to all the executors that we have. And this is cached in all the executors. Now, since we have the partitions of data residing in all the executors, they can use this broadcast variable which we have sent and can join or do the operation that is required. And once this is done, all the executors can send out the result sets separately. They don't need to shuffle data in between them. And this is why it is known as distributed state variable because this particular piece of variable is distributed across the cluster. Now that we know what is a broadcast variable, let's see this with an example. So for our example, we have created variable which is a dictionary with the department ID and the department names. Now this is something that we'll use to join with the department ID in the employee data and we'll try to populate the department data. Now to use this variable and send it to all the executors, we need to broadcast and for that we need to create a broadcast variable. So to create a broadcast variable, let's name the broadcast variable as broadcast department names. And to broadcast this variable, I'll write spark dot spark context dot broadcast. And we'll put the variable name, which is department names. Now, let me run this first and let me run this second. Now, we have created this variable. If you want to see the type of this variable, in Python, we can just write type of this variable which will give us the type. Now if you see this is a broadcast type variable. Now if you want to see the value of this broadcast type variable you can just write types dot value and it will show you the value of that particular broadcast variable. Now if we go back in our jobs and refresh still nothing is there because we have not executed any action yet. Now as per the theory we know this variable would be cached in each of the executor but to use it let's create a UDF. So for that, I'll import the UDF functions. I'll, I'll write spark dot sql dot functions import UDF, and let's create our UDF. So I'll write def, and we'll get say get department names, and for that the input would be department ID because we'll look up on department ID and we'll populate department name. So I'll write like this, and to look up the value, we need the broadcast variable which is broadcast variable department names, and I'll put dot values dot get and this will pass the department id which is the key for this broadcast variable 
Now, this is a function now. Let's create it as UDF. So, I'll just write UDF. Now, this is an UDF. Let me run this. Our UDF is ready. To use this UDF, we'll create a new column in the employee's data frame. So, I'll create EMP final as a data frame and I'll use the EMP data frame with which I'll create a new column called with column and the name of the column would be department name and I'll use this UDF. So, I'll put this get and I'll pass the column name which is department ID. And we created our department name column. Now, before we can run this, let me import the column as well. So, I'll put the column as well and let me rerun both of them. Now, if I go and refresh, nothing will be there because I've not called any action yet. Let's view the data. So, to the, do that, I'll write emp final dot show. Okay. Okay, we see the department name as null. What might be the problem? So, understand the problem. We have not done the return here. So, I have to write return. The value should be written. Let me rerun this, rerun this, and run this again. Let me zoom out for you. Awesome. If you see the department names are populated correctly this time. So let me go back and refresh the job. Since we have run the so two times, you can see both of them. Now let me just expand this for you. And if you see, this whole thing is happening in a single stage. There is no SQL involved because we have distributed broadcast variable in each of the executor, and that is being used here with the help of an UDF. We are not using any operation that is leading to suffer. And this is how a broadcast variable can be helpful when you need to supply some lookup table or a machine learning model to your data frames. Now, there is a very good implementation of this broadcast variable that we know of, which is broadcast joins. That we will see when we will optimize our joins. We will see how a table being broadcasted in order to make and optimize the joins. Okay, now that we have understood the broadcast variables, Let's look into the other type of distributed share variable, which are accumulators. Now, to understand accumulators, let's consider a use case where we need to calculate the total salary of a particular department six. Now, we know that the data is distributed into multiple executors for that particular department. So, the data will rely in different partitions in each of the executor for that particular department. And in order to do the count, we have to bring in all the data from all the executors to a particular executor. And here we need to do the sum. Now, if you see, we have involved SUFFL in this operation and this brings us to one more question. Is there a simple fault tolerant way to do this operation? The answer is yes. We have another variable called accumulators, which will be processed row by row in a distributed fashion in each of the executors and that will be updated every time a row is processed. And once this particular variable is updated from each of the row that is lying in all of the executors, we can get the final value for that accumulator, which can provide us the sum which is required. I know this can sound confusing for the first time. Let's see this with an example. Let's first try to calculate the total salary for department 6 in the usual way. To do that, let me import the sum function first. So to do that, I'll write functions import sum. And now let's write our aggregation. For that, I'll use the EMP data frame. So I'll write EMP dot group by. But before that, let me put the filter, which is where and we just need it for department 6. So I'll write department ID equals to 6. And we will do on a group by of department ID. And we'll do the aggregation. I'll write AGG. And we need to do the sum. So I'll write sum. And we need to do the sum of salary. So I'll put salary. Okay. And I'll just do a small so here. So I'll run this. Let's wait for this to complete. Awesome. We got our sum of salary here, but this is an exponential format. Let me cast this. So I'll write dot cast here and let me do it in long. So I'll write long. Let me read in this. Nice. We got our sum here. But if I go back and refresh my Spark UI, let me go into this. Now, if you see there is an exchange involved, which implies there is a shuffle done. You can see a QE shuffle read. This implies there was a shuffle involved. Right. We can also go into the jobs and see that same. So I'll go into the job and I'll click on the first show string here. Here the exchange happened. Let me go back and see the second one. So this is the second one. If I go back, you see the data is read in the first and then all the data is bought into one task to do the count. Now, how to do this in one more way, which is using the distributed variable accumulators. Now, to define an accumulator, say department cell, I'll write spark.spark context dot accumulator 
and this will create our first accumulator named department cell. Now we need to provide the default value. Since we are trying to calculate a salary, let me put the default value as zero. I'll run this. If I go back and I'll refresh the job tab, you'll see nothing. Five is the highest job ID here. Okay. Now that we have created our accumulator, let's write our for each function. This for each function will allow us to go through all the records for that particular data frame row by row. So to do that, I'll write emp dot for each and in this we'll write our inline function. So I'll write lambda and we need to parse each row, right? So it will be row by row. So our lambda row and then we need to pass the department ID and salary of that row to a particular function which will add that to our accumulator. So consider our function is calculate salary. So I'll write calculate salary and we'll pass department ID. So I'll write row dot department ID and again of that row will pass the salary. So I'll write row dot salary. Now these are the columns that we have for that particular row, right? Now we need to define this particular function first. So what we'll do is I'll copy this definition here and I'll write the function first. So I'll write def and I'll put that function which is here and I'll remove this row dot. I'll just make a department salary and department ID and salary. And now we'll check if the department ID is six, then we'll add it to accumulator. So I'll write if department id is equals to equals to six then we'll add it to the accumulator so i'll write department sal dot add and we'll add it to the salary okay let me run this let's wait for it awesome this completed let me go back and let me refresh the job tab if you see this for each it completed with 16 tasks and if i open this you'll find it in a single stage it is all map operation and map part partitions because it is happening row by row into the same data frame. It is not doing any shuffle. So th this is happening in all of the 16 executors in distributed fashion, right? Let's see the value of our accumulator. So which is department cell. So I'll let department cell dot value. Let me run this. Awesome. We got the total salary. Now, if you see, this is same as that what we got in our data frame previously. I hope you have understood how broadcast variable and accumulators are used. This was just a simple use case. You can use it for many other use cases and there are a long list of use cases for these two variables. Now, if you like my content, make sure to like and subscribe and put down your valuable feedbacks in the comment. Till then, keep learning, keep growing, keep sharing.